So um, my name is Christian, I'm one of the founders of Mavenhut. Mavenhut is a very young social gaming company in Europe. We are right now, I think, uh, about 30 person in the studio in Bucharest, Romania, and um, we've been de developing games for the past two years. And our flagship title, and actually our very first game, is called Solitaire Arena. Uh, it is a game that we have it right now across all platforms: Facebook, Android, and iOS. So today, I'm going to share with you a couple of. Uh, the learnings that we have found along the way while we have started this from uh, scratch with pretty much zero experience whatsoever. Uh, so let's get started. So first of all, I really need you by show of hands uh, to let me know which one of you has ever played Solitaire before. So yeah, There's, you, you didn't play Solitaire before? You're, no, no, the person behind you. Uh, pre pretty weird. Uh, that's, that's really pretty weird, I know. I, like the first person that I've met who never played Solitaire before. Anyway, uh, so um, a short history about this game is the Klondike version of uh, Solitaire is the one which is available on uh, every PC out there since uh, uh, Windows was launched probably 20 years ago. So the purpose of this game uh, back then was for Microsoft to sort of educate their customers in order how to use their mouse. So like drag, drag and drop and pointing and clicking. Uh, so uh, it's, it's one of those games that uh, sort of everybody knows how to play it. So the game mechanics has, have been there for, uh, for quite a while now. So there wasn't any learning curve when we uh, were teaching our new players uh, how to play this game. So what, what we brought uh, new to the table when it comes to this solitaire game? Well, uh, we actually have made the first multiplayer, multiplayer version of the game. So solitaire is generally a single player experience, but uh, what we have done is uh, we have built a v uh, game mechanic that we can play in real time with a different per person across the globe uh, on Facebook. So this was our innovation for the simple solitaire game out there. Um, and the cool thing about it is the fact that um, <coughs> Also, we've done something really cle clever, so you were able to play this game not only from your Facebook uh, account, but you can also play it on other different uh, devices. So we are pretty much the first game out there uh, which offered like a truly cross-platform experience. So you can play in real time from your iPhone with somebody from, I don't know, Brazil who plays it from his desktop computer. Uh, so there were quite, quite a few challenges along the way and uh, I want to share a couple of those learnings uh, with you uh, right now. So uh, let's put things into perspective. We have launched the Facebook version of Solitaire Arena in March 2013 and uh, we have been building this game for uh, almost one year uh, because we had very limited resources. I think we were like on, we had only one developer, and um, we've tried to polish it as much as possible before bringing it to market. So this was like the um, in March 2013 was like the proper launch of the game, and later on, like uh, six months later, in November last year. We were able to launch the iOS version. We've picked iOS first because um, it was not necessarily a strategic decision, but it was a matter of the resources that we had uh, uh, we, we had back then. And later on, in uh, February this year, we've launched the Android version. So meanwhile, right now, Solitaire Arena on Facebook is in the top 50 games in terms of users. Uh, it's over, it has more than 10 million installs. It's in the top 30 games when it comes to the top grossing application on Facebook. And uh, right now in, um, on uh, the App Store or in the Google Play, just started to pick up a little bit. Now, I need you also by show of hands to let me know which one of you guys are actually developing games right now because I'm going to pitch my presentation and adjust my presentation. Okay, makes sense. Great. So, now, uh, let's get started. So, for, for those of you that just uh, joined right now, 
Uh, my name is Christy. I'm building uh, along with my team in Bucharest, Romania, a game called Soit Arena, which can be played on different platforms. Uh, it's one of the first games that can be played on the iOS and Android device and also on the desktop computer. Uh, right now, in terms of active users, um, the chart pie looks like this. 65% of our users are actually playing the game on Facebook and only 35% are uh, of our active users are playing on their mobile devices. Uh, this is mainly because we have actually, we were a Facebook first company and um, we've launched it uh, on Facebook before we launched the mobile version. Nevertheless, it's also because at our core, we had an experience of six years developing Facebook games, so we pretty much knew the mechanics when it comes to virality and open graph stories and uh, publishing um, publishing some really cool stories on uh, uh, on our players' walls and whatsoever. So this pretty much grew a little bit our uh, virality and our active users on Facebook. In terms of mobile, we didn't have the knowledge so far, but it started very slowly to pick up a little bit. Now let's get to the fun part when it comes to the monetization. So right now, in terms of uh, uh, the revenue, so this is a pie chart of the revenue from exactly last month. So it was June. 85% uh, of our total revenue comes from Facebook and uh, only 20% of the revenues come from um, iOS and Android. And uh, from this total revenue, only 5% comes from advertising. So most of it is actually virtual goods. In terms of virtual goods, we only sell one power-up, and that thing is called Magic. Um, Solitaire Arena is a very, very simple game, and we've tried to keep it as simple as possible also when it comes to monetizing this game. So we only use, we only sell actually one power-up, and it's called Magic. Uh, that power-up actually enables you uh, and offers you the possibility to finish every solitaire game out there because 75% of our games, uh, of the games of solitaire, are uh, games that you cannot solve. So uh, at its core, solitaire is a, uh, it's a puzzle game that you pretty much get stuck somewhere around uh, the gaming session. And Magic actually offers this possibility to you. And also gives you a very, very um, smooth edge uh, against your uh, against your opponent. In terms of um, advertising, like I've mentioned, it's only five percent of our total revenue, and um, we've tried so many things on Facebook. So we've tried so many things that would actually increase our revenues in terms of advertising. We've pretty much used every ad provider out there, and the results were really bad. So it was 0% of our total revenues from uh, from Facebook. It uh, comes from uh, comes from advertising. And uh, nevertheless, it looks a little bit better on the mobile uh, on the mobile version. Obviously, pretty much everybody who's developing any kind of uh, mobile application knows that there's a little bit more money when it comes to advertising there. So 20% of our revenues in from our total mobile revenues come from advertising. <laughs> Great, so that pretty much sums up the entire structure of our uh, monetization model. Now let's move forward to retention. And uh, when it comes to retention, uh, our game is performing a little bit over the uh, average uh, metrics out there. So in terms of uh, the day one retention, so this means that the user that have installed our application yesterday and came back for at least one session today. On Facebook, it's about 30%, and on uh, Android and iOS, it's about 50%. Um, also, Going, moving a little bit further in terms of the day seven retention, it of course it uh, decreases a little bit, and uh, on Facebook it's only 50%, and Android and mobile uh, overall is about 35%. And actually, there are so many multiple reasons for that. I don't want to go in for in further details for the reasons why users don't come back for uh, and play your game for the second in the second day but i would say that the number one reason is actually uh, how it easy it is for them to come back and play the game so for example um, this is like a very easy screenshot if you install your application that icon comes to your default page and it's very likely for you to come back at least to check it or at least to delete it the second day uh, but when it comes to facebook oh, 
that's that's a mess, it's a really mess. Because um, there's sort of an algorithm back, back there where if you play that game for a larger amount uh, in the very first session, you might actually get your game to be bookmarked by Facebook, but that bookmark is somewhere like in the left bottom corner and there's so much noise around it. So um, this would be like the number one reason why uh, the, sec the secondary tension on Facebook is so low and is pretty much messing up with our numbers. So uh, in the best case that you're actually gonna make your way there in, and sort of bypass the algorithm of Facebook, uh, that's pretty much the main tool that they offer when it comes to bringing back your users, which sucks. But anyway, um, nevertheless, um, when it comes to the average visit duration, the users that are playing our game on Facebook, they spend four times more minutes playing our game there than on our mobile devices. And uh, this is pretty much understandable considering the fact that our average uh, user is a female, 40, 42 years old, and once they open their la laptop and start playing the game, they play the game. I mean, they really don't mess around, so they spend a lot of time playing our game. Great. Um, another thing that is worth mentioning in terms of uh, in terms of average visit duration is the fact that uh, tablet is very similar in terms of numbers across the board with our desktop. So um, in terms of tablet right now, it's pretty much twice, uh, people spend twice as much time on the tablet rather than they're uh, spending their time playing our game on mobile. And this is taking into consideration every single cohort of users out there. So it's even taking into consideration users that are only playing our Canvas game or are actually playing the game on Canvas and also playing the game on uh, at least one other device. So that would be, like, that would be like the top similarities when it comes to uh, desktop and, um, and uh, uh, mobile device for Solita Arena. Uh, another thing that probably every other game developer does out there is A-B testing. And um, we're doing A-B testing right now on our um, Facebook uh, game. We're not doing any A-B testing for our mobile device. So for example, uh, just to very quickly explain what A-B testing is, you take a group of your players and you divide it into two separate cohort of your users. Uh, you display, for example, one tiny modification uh, in your game, for example, you have a green button and you display the buy button in a green color to the first group and the buy button in orange color to the second group. Later on, you realize that the uh, first group is performing better. So the next thing that you're probably gonna do is roll out the buy button to the entire group of, um, the green button to the entire group of players. So we're only doing that in our Facebook and uh, in our Facebook game and we're not doing that in our mobile, in our mobile games. The reason behind it is pretty much because it offers us so much flexibility when it comes to testing so many things uh, according to our game. So the way that we do it is we take into consideration a game mechanic that we can very easily port to our mobile device and we're testing it very thoroughly on, uh, on our, uh, on our um, desktop version. We're also using Swerve as a tool and uh, we're ha really happy with them as well. Uh, nevertheless, we haven't found any easy way to do it, for example, on our iOS device. And the last thing that I want to talk to you about is the cross-promotion between uh, these two uh, platforms. So we have a very large amount of users playing our Facebook game, and we have just launched, for example, our iOS version. So um, back then, I think it was probably half a million daily active users in our Facebook application. So we've tried as much as possible to bring those users to install our game on their uh, iOS device or Android device. So we, what we have done is we've exactly tried to pinpoint where is the um, time where they actually stop playing our game. So if there's, for example, uh, a cooldown session or if they play our the average average uh, number of games that they play is let's say ten, 10 games during one session before the 11th game start then we will be displayed like a huge pop-up saying hey 
why don't you install this um, this game on your iOS device uh, and you'd get like some free uh, free magic for that and this worked really really well so it was a huge driver for uh, our early days when it comes to um, when it comes to um, building that uh, building that group of players that would later on uh, bring other players into into your mobile game. So uh, it worked really well. I think every single trick that you can use to bring users to your mobile uh, mob to, to download your mobile game, you should definitely do it, including banners, including whatever crosses your crosses your mind. Nevertheless, I cannot say the same when it comes to moving players from that are playing uh, only on um, on their phone, on, on, only on, on uh, their mobile device and bring those players to play it also on the desktop. And we've tried so many things. Uh, we've tried doing pretty much the same uh, and using the pretty much the same algorithm when it comes to the session duration and uh, try to incentivize them. It didn't work. So unfortunately, here we didn't crack uh, the solution, but we're still trying. And um, one of the things that I've seen works really well for us is the fact that we have kept one leaderboard for all games across all platforms. So it doesn't matter if you play it, for example, on your Android device or on Facebook, everybody counts in one global leaderboard. So that pretty much is the only thing that we can pinpoint as a, as a, um, uh, as a feature that works when it comes to bringing users from uh, one platform to another. I think that would be pretty much all for me today. I went through the slides really fast because I really want to get your questions. And uh, if you guys have uh, anything that you want to know about me or about Solitarian, let me know. So please. Are you using Unity? No. So everything is native. So we've built everything from scratch. And the reason behind that is mainly because of our internal resources uh, and uh, also because um, I, I think it is more of a strategic reason as, as a company. Uh, there's not so many uni developers, experienced uni developers out there. The, the reason I ask is just that, I mean, it makes it cross-platform easier, but there's that big problem of the Unity player download that People talk about it as being a big barrier. So when you talk about the great numbers you have on Facebook, I thought, uh oh. <laughs> that's that's not that Unity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, sure. Is the text stack uh, HTML or is it Flash? So uh, on Facebook, it's an HTML5, uh, but it's actually mostly it's JavaScript. Uh, but uh, there's also a lot of HTML5 elements. There's no Flash whatsoever. Okay. So why did you make the decision to use uh, a native version when you had one code base that you could theoretically port it to multiple platforms? Well, it's, it sounds easy <laughs> to do that. <laughs> So the first, the, the first thing that we wanted to do, like, okay, let's go mobile. So the game was able, you, you were able to play the game in, um, on your tablet, for example. Uh, it was JavaScript, it was very easy. Uh, we just had to I don't know, adjust a little bit our code. Nevertheless, you were able to play the game inside the mobile version of Facebook. So it, uh, it was quite tricky to call it uh, an application, I know. I mean, it, it was, we've tried so many things, like we've tried explaining to our users that you can actually uh, shortcut that and put it on your tablet. It doesn't work. <laughs> it really doesn't work. So we had to go native from, from that point over. That makes sense, right? Yeah, I feel like that's probably what's making your A-B testing on mobile difficult. As well. yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's hard to do A-B testing when you have, um, uh, the time frame for Apple to approve your build. It's hard to do A-B testing when, uh, for example, the way that we, we do A-B testing, like we put something live on Monday, by Wednesday we have a lot of users that already have given us some a few numbers, and by Friday we have even rolled out on, uh, on our mobile device. On mobile you cannot do that. Nevertheless, what you learn from mobile, you do, it doesn't necessarily mean that works on Facebook. So uh, it goes like this. So if you learn something on Facebook, then it probably it's actually very likely that it's going to work on mobile. You guys, any other questions? I would love to hear them out. Yeah. Um, yeah, what did you guys use for your, uh, your cross platform leaderboard? Uh, uh, we use Parse. Parse. Yeah, we use Parse. Um, not very happy with it. 
for, for the moment, so it was quite a lot of headaches. Um, we actually um, used XMPP for um, uh, for the connection between the players, uh, but for the leaderboards on mobile, we use parse. Hopefully, they're gonna get a little bit more mature down the road, and uh, but nevertheless, for the, for the moment, we we stick with, we're still gonna stick with them. Anything else, guys? Any more questions? Okay, I guess we're well, done. Thank you very much. Thanks.